Hi hey everyone, thanks for stopping by and for returning to the old world. Today the start of a new series, Stuff What I Painted. What is Stuff What I Painted? Well, Stuff What I Painted will be a look at the models that I've painted in the last calendar month. Rules around this are that models will only count as painted if they're fully painted, based and ready for use on the tabletop or just to be put away. Doesn't mean with multi-base models, for example, if the basing isn't quite finished, that could be a large number of models not deemed finished, which can lead to some large dips and also growths in productivity. Really, this series comes out of a regular monthly update that I do through my Club WAPSAT group looking at the models I've painted each month and how this relates to my Wargaming resolutions, a video on which is already available, should you wish to have a look. I found doing that sort of approach of logging what I've been up to really helps in keeping me motivated to getting the results that I need and for keeping me going when I start to get a little bit bogged down. But just to mix things up, I thought I would commit this to video, see how it goes, um, and go from there, really. So, what am I going to be covering in the stuff art I painted? Obviously, the things that I've painted, I will talk about perhaps how I acquired a particular model. I might touch on a couple of techniques I've used. I'm not intending to do painting tutorials, as those who have seen previous videos of mine will no doubt have recognised <clears throat> I am at best a very average painter. So whilst I might pick out the odd interesting thing or thing I found interesting, that doesn't mean that uh, I'm going to be telling you the ins and outs of how to paint your models. So, that being said, let's get rid of the piece of paper I've scrawled on and start looking at the stuff that I've painted. And here is model number one. So this is Space Marine Whirlwind. It's a model I picked up at the Hammerhead show in Newark around March time. For those that don't know, Hammerhead is um, a relatively small show in Nottinghamshire. It has a really interesting array of uh, people turning up there usually. And unlike the big events such as Salute or <clears throat> the equivalents in the US and abroad, I suppose, it's a little bit cheaper for people to get a stall, which means that people you might not normally stumble across at a show or stumble across online. Okay. Additionally, there's a bring and buy, which is where I got this particular beast from. Now, these red bits at the back were holes in the model originally and it the paint was quite heavily slapped on. I bought it purely because I don't have a whirlwind and it was up for sale for five pounds and I kind of reached the point where I couldn't not buy it. Um, relatively simple paint job that fits in with my colour scheme for my Space Marines. Now, if I was doing these Space Marines today, I probably wouldn't choose this array of colours, but the army was started many, many years ago with a view to actually I wanted to have a go with a very bright white and some yellow. Things that, well, maybe with contrast paint I'd have a better chance with it, but not decisions that I'd make today. But I'm not going to repaint the whole force. Moving on, we have over here some Dwarf Heavy Infantry. These are equipped with hand weapon and shields and will form the basis of an Ironbreaker unit. I've done again separately videos on unboxing Dwarf Heavy Infantry uh, and the first unit I've made of these which are armed with double-handed weapons. These guys didn't rank up quite as nicely as the guys with double-handed weapons. But overall, I think they painted up fairly nicely. I was a little concerned with the brightness of these models. 
Now, I was deliberately going for a look that wasn't as dark as I would normally go for with my model painting. Uh, to achieve this, I, I simply, over the undercoat, gave them a heavy dry brush of white using a cheap acrylic white paint I picked up at the works. I think it was about two pounds for a big tube. It has helped bring out the shadows and to lift the colours a little bit. Although I was a little bit concerned at the time, particularly with the shields, that they were starting to look like a toddler had been at them with some felt tips. They really look, were looking bright, but once the paint started to dry, actually, I found actually I quite liked the result. So overall, it's come out quite nicely and has allowed me to experiment with a, a different finish to the sort of more grim dark aspect I would normally go for. Moving on down the line, we have the front rank of a unit of French Napoleonic infantry. Uh, these guys are multiple multi-bases so uh, at least three have to be done for them to be complete. These do fit into one of my wargaming resolutions. It's the stretch goal is to get my French infantry army, uh, sorry French Ar French Napoleonic army done. I've got at the time of recording this video two battalions to do plus finish the one these guys will sit in i'm doing 15 models to a battalion so 40 models to paint by the end of the year doable but i have also bought another box of dwarf heavy infantry so that's 30 models so things are starting to get a little tight moving on we have a space marine again in the same color scheme for my custom chapter the order of the sacred book uh, so he's a normal gadget, hence the yellow helmet. It means he can fit either into a tactical squad or devastator squad. And one thing about this chap that I do think is interesting is his weapon of choice, which is the missile launcher. Now, for me, nothing says tactical squad more than the missile launcher, even more so than the humble bolter. I really like the versatility of this weapon system, either to fire crack missiles or frag, as the circumstances dictate. So it's always useful, generally whatever the target. Really, really versatile. I've normally run at least two or three in my army when I'm using my Space Marines. Last, but my no leans least, we have a test piece, which is an Orlok Ganger from Necromander. This model is quite old. It actually came in the starter set for the original game back in the early 1990s. I just wanted to have a little bit of a look to see how the various colours would work. Now, I've not gone particularly overboard with the paints and the highlights and stuff. Just wanted to see how it would look overall. And I'm pretty happy with the result, knowing that if I spent quite a bit of more time on it and treated it as an individual model rather than a model that I might choose to batch paint, I can probably get it up a, an extra level, which will be good. The base, I was going to just do a bit of normal basing, then decided that doesn't really fit the aesthetic of the model. So just took a bit of corrugated card and I've gone over it with some browns and metal colour just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now the one thing I did note with this model, <clears throat> excuse the throat, a little bit dry today. I wasn't a big fan of all these bits of cloth wrapped around the arm and leg. Now I do know however that the newer Orlok models don't have that as part of their aesthetic which does kind of draw me to them a little bit more. Um, it is something I'm very tempted to do, getting hold of maybe just an Orlock gang just to paint up and to really go for it on an individual model basis. But as I said, I've got a lot of paint models still to paint this year, so I don't think I'm realistically going to get it into my timeline for this year. But maybe a project for next year. Who knows? <clears throat> So that's it for a roundup for the models that I've painted this, much, um, this month. 
a bit of a variety of things and one thing you will notice is there will always be a variety of models I don't like getting stuck into just painting the same type of thing over and over again so I'll be dipping into the various projects that I've got on the go each month all that remains for me really is to say thank you very much for dropping by this is Return to the Old World have a great day